what is JSON? It is JavaScript Object Notation. Um, yeah, so if any of you have ever used JavaScript, it's exactly like how you would uh, instantiate an object in JavaScript, which makes it extremely powerful if you are hitting a server and getting JSON back and then like parsing in JavaScript, because there's an eval function that'll basically just take the JSON and give you a JavaScript object, object back. And also Pro, Ruby, and Python are very easy to uh, parse JSON with because JSON is basically a giant hash with arrays also. And those languages are very hash friendly. All right. Um, oh, and fun fact, it was started in 2001 at a company called State Software. So this is what JSON looks like. We already saw some earlier. So does anyone want to like explain to me what this is? So an object is going to be a key value pair. So someone want to explain this? Go for it. So it has a zip code of 75,002, and it, the required variable is true, and it has, it looks like a, an object called students with a for, uh, well, an array of students. And um, the first student has a name, the first name of John, last name of Smith, the second student has first name of Jane, last name of Wills, and the third student has a first name of Jeff, last name of Wills. Awesome. Good work. Yeah, so you recognize that this is an array, okay? So you get this, the square brackets mean array. And you can basically create giant, like, hashes within hashes and stuff of arrays and objects and everything. Awesome. So, there we go. It's pretty straightforward. It can take, you know, numbers, booleans, null values, strings, obviously. Um, yeah, so the alternative to JSON, which is also extremely common, is XML, the extensible markup language. It's very similar to HTML. The only difference is that in HTML you can totally just screw up and like not close tags, whereas in XML that is bad and you cannot do that. Um, but it uses tags and attributes very much like HTML, and it's extremely powerful because it is so extensible, and you can create like really complex objects with it and store really complex data. Um, and it can be extended without breaking stuff. So if you had a parser that was looking for specific tags, if you add another tag, it wouldn't break it. Whereas with JSON, it might, depending on what you're doing. Um, so here we go. This is what XML looks like, if y'all have not seen XML. Um, so we have the tags are the, these guys in the little, you know, triangle brackets. And then the attributes are going to be like category equals and then stuff in quotation marks. And then the stuff in between the tags is just like the values that those tags contain. Um, yeah. Well, uh, Thoughts on when you use JSON versus when you use XML, or is it whatever someone feels like? I'll cover that in a minute. Okay. Um, yeah. So this was finished in 1997, so it is older than JSON. If anyone is curious. All right. So. Why would you use XML or JSON? So, here's an awesome quote that I found on Stack Overflow. XML is like violence. If it doesn't solve your problem, you aren't using enough of it. So, this clearly <laughs> <laughs> explains that XML is like really extensible and you can do crazy shenanigans with it. And you can basically get the results that you want in some way or another. Whereas JSON is very straightforward and clean and it's not, there's not a lot of extra, like you don't have you know, opening and closing tags and ridiculous other stuff. Um, there's a huge debate over what is better, JSON or XML. A lot of people are prejudiced against XML because it is so commonly used and even when it's not necessary to use it. So very simple data structures, people use XML and it's just unnecessary. So it's kind of a Emacs bin kind of debate where people get very heated. Um, but as we've seen, GitHub uses JSON and it seems like a lot of APIs are going the JSON route, but there's still a lot of XML out there, and some of them support both. So, there you go. Any questions about JSON or XML? Awesome. So, let's go back to the console. Who uses just here? On GitHub? Just anyone? Alright, I've heard that the 1300 and 2278 teacher uses them sometimes when like debugging stuff. Okay, well, let's see what just are done. Um, just are 
basically just little code snippets that people will post, and it's obviously through GitHub. Um, and it's, used, it's useful for like sending people a little piece of code and like debugging and stuff like that. Um, and the reason that we're talking about this is that we're going to use the GitHub API to do awesome stuff with JS. Um, so, and right now I do not have any JS, or else there would not be that yellow thing at the top telling me what a JS is. So, let's go back to the command line and do some cool stuff. Um, let's try another curl command here. All right, so I'm gonna try and hit the endpoint to get star gis. Let's see what this happens. So you can star them in you know, your favorites or whatever. All right, so that's a super helpful message. It requires authentication. A lot of APIs will not give you such helpful messages, and they'll just be like, nope, you did the wrong thing. So let's try a little authentication here. So the dash u is also just basic HTTP protocol kind of stuff, so that's my username. You should use your username because it will immediately prompt you for a password. Can we share your username and password? Uh, not, not hers. <laughs> um, you can set up a GitHub account if you don't have one. If you just go to GitHub, I mean, it takes a few clicks. Yeah. All right. Um, so once I type my password, I get empty brackets. Sweet. Um, so we didn't get any sort of bad message, so that's good. Basically, I have no starred gist is what this means, or else there would be a bunch of listed gist on there. Um, so that's too bad. I also don't have, I don't think I even have a single gist in here yet. No gist yet. So that's kind of sad. We should make a gist. So <coughs> let's check out this JSON. Um, so this is going to be the JSON that we're going to send the API to create a gist, right? So we have the description that will show up in like the little description field, and then I want it to be a public gist, you can also make it a private gist if you wanted. Um, and then the file name is gonna be demofile.txt, and then the stuff actually inside the gist where the code would be is gonna say, check it out. So, if I were to move, um, I'm going to use the dash mark block so we can make sure that we don't write it for uh, response back. We're going to use a post request to send this data. So this is another data flag that's uh, different than just the dash D. You can use both. One is just more verbose than the other. And then the endpoint that we're going to hit is We're just going to hit gist. So, let's see what happens. All right. So, 201 created. Awesome. That is what we wanted since it was a post request. Um, and since I was logged in, I have 4,998 remaining uh, hits, I guess, whatever they want to call it. Um, so, here's the new URL of the gist that I just made. And then a bunch of other URLs, and you know, I use plain text here and blah blah blah. So, a bunch of awesome stuff. So, if I were to refresh this page, hey, look at that. I created a gist. Awesome. So, any questions about that? Is there a way to tell to like read from a file for your post so you don't have to do that disgusting multi line paste? <laughs> But that was so awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a, I believe it's, if you use the at sign and then the name of the file. Okay, I mean, I'm sure it's in the man page, but it is there is a way to do it. Yeah, okay. yeah there is. Um, okay, so what would happen if we didn't have the correct URL? So say we got rid of the S at the bottom. Well, gotta keep signing in even though something bad will happen. Not found, okay, so we got a 404. So that is not the correct endpoint, obviously, but that's a super helpful message. So now we know that we typed it in incorrectly. So what if we were to mess with this JSON and get rid of a semicolon? All right, problems parsing JSON. Another super helpful message. And this was a 400 error, so bad request usually means bad data and you didn't properly send your stuff. Um, 
yeah, so now that we've made a post, let's do something else that's pretty cool.